Welcome to this particular course uh, and the class in particular uh, here we are going to talk about micro machining and the micro machining is a part of the course advanced neural science for engineers. Now why we need to learn this micro machining and, and how it is useful for uh, fabricating the sensors in general because like I said the heart of uh, the entire course is lithography and sensors. Because uh, once you understand how uh, you have the sensors, uh, transducers uh, that can be fabricated for uh, acquiring or applying stimulation both okay, acquiring signals from the brain or applying stimulation to certain part of the brain, you uh, will be able to solve lot of problems in this area. Now when we call about, when we talk about micro machining, what does uh, the word machining means right, machining means uh, to, uh, to to, to, to uh, work on a material right or to fabricate a material or fabricate a particular design right uh, using certain tools. These tools can be milling, these tools can be drilling right. In fact, uh, when we talk about uh, manufacturing right, then there are two aspects of manufacturing. One is additive manufacturing and the second one is subtractive manufacturing. So, uh, here we will be talking about machining at a micron scale and the use of this would be to create uh, diaphragms or to create certain structures. Now, when we talk about micro machining, uh, there are two parts of micro machining. The first part is called bulk micro machining, B-U-L-K bulk micro machining. The second part is called surface micro machining alright. So, let us see how this bulk micro machining and surface micro machining would help us uh, in, uh, in the overall performance of the sensor. In fact, uh, for certain sensors without using this bulk or surface micro machining, uh, the sensors would be incomplete, we cannot realize the sensor. So, uh, if you see the slide, I will draw uh, a cantilever okay now what do you mean by cantilever cantilever is a structure right that hangs on one end right uh, or a, a hands without support here and there is a support a fixed support on this area this is your cantilever to be as simple as that now have you seen this kind of cantilever yes we have right a diving board when uh, uh, when you have to dive right uh, then this is a diving board uh, this is uh, uh, for the swimming right in in if you see the uh, swimmers they jump on this and then this cantilever will flap like this right it will it will do like this but at a certain frequency uh, 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 we can we can utilize this sense uh, cantilever for certain applications. Let us not worry about it. Now I want to fabricate this cantilever, right? But without uh, uh, deteriorating my substrate. What does that mean? So I have a, a silicon substrate. Okay, I have silicon substrate, and what I want is a cantilever. that looks like this okay the cantilever that looks like this what is this cantilever made up of this is made up of gold okay now to do so what we will do what are the process to do so now if you see the silicon to start with end to end at the end let us say it is 500 microns here also is 500 microns that means we are not we are not subtracting anything from the substrate we are not machining the substrate right substrate remains as it is now to from here what is the route to go here okay so let us understand this particular steps so that you understand what is surface micro machining okay so i'll draw here you have your silicon then on silicon we will deposit a 
zinc oxide. Thick zinc oxide can be deposited using using physical paper deposition. We have seen physical paper deposition, correct? Now, on this zinc oxide. I will spin coat photoresist. We all remember the lithography section where we talked about the photoresist. So, I have positive photoresist. Okay. This is my positive photoresist. On this, I will and then I will do soft bake, right? I will do soft bake and then load the mass. Now, if you remember the steps, right? the first step for lithography right you take a substrate then uh, if there is a material deposition then deposit the material then pr coating then soft wick temperature 90 degree centigrade 1 minute hot plate right fourth what is next step next step is load the mask right fifth step expose uh, photoresist with or using uv light right ultraviolet light next step next step is unload mask right next step develop photoresist right and next step is hard bake hard bake 120 degree centigrade 1 minute on hot plate, correct. So, you have a substrate, you have PR coating, then you do soft bake, then you load the mask, expose the photoresist with UV light, then unload the mask, develop photoresist, hard bake, and then you are ready. So, then I have a positive photoresist and then I have a, a mask, okay. I have a mask and my mask looks like this. Okay. This is my mask. So, after the after the loading the mask, what is the next step? You have to expose the photoresist. Using ultraviolet light. Using ultraviolet light. The next step is to unload the mask. Unload mask and develop photoresist. So, if you do that, the next step is your zinc oxide and then your photoresist is developed like this correct. So, this is your photoresist why 
because we have used positive photo resist. So, whatever the pattern is there on the mask will be there on the wafer or the unexposed region becomes stronger right. So, this is my positive photo resist. Now, do not worry too much about the uh, like the accuracy of this one. Why I am saying is any anyway, let me redraw it so that you do not get confused ok. Now, it is ok. All right. Now, the next step is we will dip this wafer uh, we have to do hard bake of course, right and then we dip the wafer dip wafer in ZNO agent dip the wafer in ZNO agent. If we dip the wafer in ZNO agent what will happen the agent which is not uh, the zinc oxide which is not protected by the positive photoresist will get etched right. So, what we will have if I have this and if I dip this wafer this particular wafer in a zinc oxide agent which is 1 percent HCl then I will have this is my positive photoresist, this one would be zinc oxide, this is silicon right, because this region was not protected by photoresist. So, it got etched in zinc oxide agent. Now, the next step is I want to strip off the photoresist. So, for stripping of the photoresist what is there? Acetone we know right. So, we can dip this wafer in acetone if we dip this wafer in acetone what will happen? The photoresist will be stripped off, photoresist will be stripped off and we will have the pattern of zinc oxide like this ok. The next step is I will deposit gold, chrome gold or gold whatever you want to say. and this is my gold. Now, the next step is I will dip this wafer, I will dip this wafer in zinc oxide agent ok, I will dip this wafer in zinc oxide agent for longer time if i do so the zinc oxide that you see here right will get will get etched right zinc oxide will get etched and what we have we will have this particular pattern again i'm repeating you take a silicon deposit zinc oxide using pvd once you deposit of zinc oxide using PVD, then you can have your photoresist, uh, photoresist which is positive photoresist spin coated onto zinc oxide and then you perform soft bake which is done at 90 degrees centigrade 1 minute on hot plate uh, followed by uh, your loading of the mask. This is the mask uh, that we have shown here and then you expose it with UV light, expose what the photoresist with UV light. Then you unload the mask, develop the photoresist by dipping the wafer in photoresist developer. Then you have the pattern that you can see in this particular case, and then you dip this wafer. Uh, then you perform the hard bake. Hard bake is done at 120 degrees centigrade, one minute on hot plate, followed by dipping the wafer in uh, zinc oxide agent. Then what you will have? The zinc oxide from this area, right, will be etched, and then you uh, strip of the photoresist by dipping the wafer in acetone followed by depositing gold and followed by uh, again dipping the wafer in zinc oxide agent for a longer time. If you have a longer time then the zinc oxide will edge in this direction and that is why you will have something called or something looks like this which is your say, uh, gold cantilever on the silicon wafer. This is the example of your micro machining or surface micro machining ok. I hope you understand how surface micro machining is. So, now if you just take the term micro machining. 
So, micro machining is derived from traditional machining process like I said it can be your uh, milling, it can be laser machining, it can be your turning, it can be your drilling uh, uh, by judicious modification of these machines. So, that now we can do not have to really drill or do the turning or milling right, but in, in a different way we are still machining the wafer ok at a micron scale. So, uh, uh, micro machining is the basic technology for fabrication of micro components of size in range of 10 to power minus 6 meters because it is micro right. So, the size is around range of 10 to power minus 6 meters. So, the materials on a micrometer scale possesses unique properties. It is used to create MEMS based devices or MEMS devices or an integrated circuit or as or end either you can use for MCS devices or you can use for ICs or you can have sensors plus ICs everything on a single chip. This is called micro MEMS is micro electromechanical systems ok. So, we are designing a electromechanical systems at a micron scale by using a micro fabrication technology and also uh, using the machining which is micro machining and photolithography and PVD and CVD and etching. So, this is a combination of micro technology. So, micro machining is a parallel process in which dozens of tens of thousands of identical elements are fabricated simultaneously on the same wafer because if I create let us say this is a wafer right. So, let me just draw if this is a wafer and I want to create or etch right then I can etch in the same batch many many transistors and many many devices in one go right. I can etch many devices in one go and that is why we say that it is a batch manufacturing process it is a batch process ok. So, on since you can create many devices from the single wafer we call it as a batch manufacturing process ok. So, good now we know what is micro machining we know little bit about uh, surface micro machining let us understand the difference between surface and bulk micro machining ok. Now, I said that surface is to build something on the substrate without machining the substrate right. The cantilever was fabricated on the substrate without changing the uh, thickness of the substrate. So, bulk micro machining is little bit different in this case we can create different structure by etching the silicon wafer. So, suppose let me just give an example of bulk micro machining for you. So, that becomes easier all right. So, just let me go back uh, and let me have one more slide ok and let me just show it to you bulk micro machining it earlier what we were looking at was surface micro machining. This time we are looking at bulk micro machining. a difficulty with the pen. So, do not worry about it bulk micro m i c r o machining m a c h i n i n g ok bulk micro machining this is what we are learning. So, you take a silicon wafer then you grow a silicon dioxide grow a silicon dioxide on silicon wafer this silicon dioxide can be grown using what now you should know right thermal oxidation and what kind of thermal oxidation we are uh, using we are using wet oxidation right because in thermal oxidation there are dry oxidation and wet oxidation. The next step in this case would be to create a window ok to create a window So, what we are doing is we are spin coating positive water resist ok. 
then we are loading a mask which is my bright field mask bright field mask then I expose this wafer with ultraviolet light ok. Then I will develop this wafer. So, unload load the mask, unload, uh, expose the wafer, unload the mask when you do spring of photo resist always remember after that you have to perform the soft bake. So, if I do that if I unload the mask and dip the wafer how it will look like if I unload the mask and develop my photo resist it will look like this. silicon dioxide, silicon dioxide, silicon and positive photo resist. After that what do we need to do? We need to do hard bake. Before we do hard bake, let us spin coat photo resist on the front side also. And now we perform hard bake ok. Hard bake is done at 120 degree centigrade for 1 minute on hot plate right. After this the next step I will dip this wafer in KOH or TMH or I will use a process called deep reactive ion etching DRI ok these are chemicals potassium hydroxide tetramethyl ammonium hydroxide DRI is a, a dry uh, etching process where we use SF6 as a gas and uh, another gas for uh, C3F8 I think uh, C3H8 just uh, let us let us cross check this okay, cross check this later on uh, it is available uh, uh, if you write down DRI and silicon etching. So, let us not worry about this, but the, the but the point is this one is used for passivation. I think we have seen this in one of the lecture the passivation and this is used for etching. So, silicon gets so if this is silicon wafer and the etching starts from the top then what happens is this etches like this. Uh, SF6 and then C3F8H8 uh, H8 will create a passivation layer, it is a passivation layer here like that. Then again there is a etching by SF6 and again the passivation layer is formed. This goes on continuing. So, what happens is your side walls are protected, the side walls are protected by the passivation uh, gas or a chemical. This is a DRI or deep reactive ion, ion etching, but we are talking about let us say here in this case wet etching. Wet etching we can use either quotation hydroxide or tetrametal ammonia hydroxide. Now, the next step is if you do that then what you have is
pattern like this. Okay. So, what we have created? We have etched bulk of silicon material. We have etched bulk of silicon material. And here what we have? right I have this. Now, what is the next step? Well, the next step is dip this wafer in, dip this wafer in acetone. If I dip this wafer in acetone, what will I have? I will have I will have a pattern like this. So, from this 450 microns or 500 microns right of silicon wafer, if I etch 300 microns or, or, or I keep on etching it right, then I am removing the bulk of the material. Since I am removing the bulk of the material, it is called bulk micro machining. Do you understand now the difference between surface and bulk? Surface micro machining, we have not we have not etched any material. In bulk, we have etched the substrate. When you say money material is substrate, okay. We have not etched the substrate in case of surface, in case of bulk, we have etched the substrate. So, let us go to the next slide. Here we can now uh, understand from the what is written here. So, bulk micro machining is a process that produces structures inside the substrate by selective etching, right. Why selective etching? Because we have only etched this much area, right, this area, and we have protected this area. See, this area is protected, and this area is for etching. So, we are selectively, selectively uh, selecting an area which needs to be etched, so is by selective etching. Surface micro machining is a process that creates structure on the top of the substrate by film deposition and selective etching, right. It, so, we have deposited a film and uh, uh, like zinc oxide and gold and only zinc oxide is etched, gold is protected. So, we have done a surface micro machining, good. Now, we know two things, right. So, let us understand uh, some of the uh, definitions uh, of on etching. The first definition that we need to understand is the aspect ratio. Was what does aspect ratio means? Okay, so the ratio of height to lateral dimension of the edge microstructure. You can see how much we are etching in this direction versus this one. So height to lateral, okay, uh, that is called aspect ratio. The next definition is selectivity. So uh, ability of process to choose between layers to be removed and interleaving layers. For example, if I have my silicon dioxide. Um, uh, silicon dioxide pattern like this right a pattern like this and if I want to if I dip this wafer in KOH or TMH that is a silicon agent silicon agent then what will happen the this process will only remove silicon will only remove silicon and will not affect silicon dioxide so it is selective to only etch the silicon 
in is is uh, silicon dioxide acts as a mask right the next thing is h rate the speed with which the process progresses how fast you can etch the uh, substrate is a h rate next one is h profile slope of the h wall all right slope of the h wall that is h profile n isotropy is given by 1 minus r lateral by r vertical this is lateral this is vertical so the ratio of lateral to vertical right uh, uh, and then if you if the n isotropy is defined by 1 minus ratio of r lateral to r vertical Okay. So, let us go to the next one. Now, in this case you can see this is an example of your surface micro machining. Uh, let us see the uh, definition uh, is carving of layers put down sequentially on the substrate by using selective etching of the sacrificial thin films to form free standing completely released thin film microstructures. So, you can see here uh, on silicon right we have silicon dioxide and uh, silicon dioxide is black in color, silicon is gray in color. So, we have patterned the silicon dioxide followed by we deposit a metal as you can see here uh, when we deposit the metal and then if we dip this wafer uh, in BHF sorry not this wafer, this wafer in buffer hydrofluoric acid BHF then the uh, silicon dioxide will etch will get etched. In our case we have taken zinc oxide in this case uh, the example is of silicon dioxide. So, zinc oxide or silicon dioxide since it gets H to form the structure right to H to form the structure they are called sacrificial layers they are called sacrificial layers S A C R I F I C I A L they are called sacrificial layers ok got it. So, we have silicon, silicon dioxide, then we have metal on silicon dioxide and then you uh, dip this wafer in BHF because silicon dioxide is uh, BHF is HN for silicon dioxide to form your cantilever. So, here uh, uh, the only uh, difficulty in this case is the difficulty to, to release uh, these cantilevers because of the surface tension uh, forces which are greater than the gravitational forces at micro scale. Okay. So, you need to understand that that the process should be clearly defined such that uh, the cantilever gets completely released. Now, if you see here there are some dots right in the cantilever some dots these are through holes through holes means uh, uh, like here through holes are there. So, that the silicon dioxide will get etched also from here along with in this direction. Okay. So, the through holes are created to, to release the cantilever completely. In this case what you see in this particular image right what you see is that there are certain cantilevers which are destroyed in the process you can see here certain cantilevers they get buckle up cantilevers which does not get released and some cantilevers gets completely released right. So, there are uh, uh, a pr process optimization studies or steps that are required to release the micro cantilever completely. So, bulk micro machining uh, can be divided into two steps further uh, dry etching and wet etching and both has isotropic and anisotropic processes. Uh, in wet etching the anisotropic process is crystal orientation dependent while uh, in dry etching the process is on the process dependent ok it is not depending on the crystals. Uh, so, that is why in if you if you take the uh, if you etch the silicon using wet etching you will have this 54.7 degree angle because the 111 will get etched differently compared to the crystals at 100. So, uh, that is a difficulty but in case of the dry etching when you etch you will always have etching like this because it is not crystal uh, orientation dependent it is a process dependent step. There are uh, plasma based techniques for dry etching one is called fluorine based etching second is called chlorine based etching ok. 
So, if you see here isotropic and anisotropic etching right, uh, the etching rate is agitation and temperature sensitive difficult to control lateral and vertical edges in case of the isotropic etching, uh, while in case of the anisotropic etching the etch rate is temperature sensitive, but self limited by orientation and of course, it is orientation dependent. Now, this is very important because um, uh, if I want to if I want to have um, let us say a window uh, which we I call W B right this is W B then how much should I open this one which is my W O right. How much window should I open and protect silicon dioxide only in the remaining region, so that I can reach the W B. Now, why it is important is because like I said the uh, wet etching uh, of silicon is orientation dependent. So, I need to understand what should be the W O so to achieve the my W B and so is the equation given here that whatever W B you want should be equal to W O minus 2 by cot theta. Uh, and here theta is 54.7 degree angle. So, uh, that is how you calculate your W B. So, if you put your uh, uh, values then if you have W uh, B of 10 microns right then you can have W O of how much to uh, get this 2 by cot theta. So, so then if you say then 10 micron plus 2 by cot theta equals to W O you have W O value and the W O value should be equivalent to the window that you are creating for etching the silicon wafer. So, the etchants like I said KOH, TMH, EDP, EDP is not used so extensively now. The etch top can be silicon dioxide, it can be a boron etch top as well. So, you can see here the 54.7 angle is created 100 is the orientation which gets etched faster 111 is slower. So, 111 is the slow etching planes 100 which is a floor this is a floor and this is a wall. So, the floor is faster etching plane the wall is slower etching plane and final shape of cavity depends on the mass geometry etching time shape of cavity depends on the truncated pyramid V groove and of pyramid. So, these are different shapes that we can achieve using the uh, the chemical etching or when at when I stop etching of silicon. These are examples of some of the uh, etch processes and bulk micro machining processes you can see that uh, we can create a truncated V groove um, and then here you can very easily see a beautiful slope of uh, silicon that is uh, within the substrate here is a cantilever that is uh, created right using the uh, machining processes. Okay, so, we will uh, stop here and we will take an example of how to utilize this particular micro machining technique for fabricating uh, let us say a pressure sensor Why right? we talk about pressure sensor because let us say if you apply a pressure onto the scalp how much pressure should be given. Because in one of the case we will look into and then uh, there will be TA class will be uh, shown in detail uh, about uh, how to design the cap for neonatal hearing screening very important topic. Uh, when the babies are born the we need to measure whether the baby can hear or not and that is called hearing screening, screening of the hearing uh, ability of a newborn, newborn are called neonates. So, you need to design a system that can be used to capture the signal from the scalp whenever you are uh, uh, you know giving a stimulation this is audio stimulation in, in a um, uh, technical term is called auditory brain response or ABR. So, when you apply or when you give the ABR to a baby's ear there is a EEG that is creating and then for that we need to take that signal or acquire the signal. Now, depending on the age of a person the if you apply or if you design the cap which are dry electrodes rather than wet electrodes then you to also make sure that it is not pressing too much is not it. So, uh, but how you measure it is pressing too much or not. So, you can have a pressure sensor right. So, now can we fabricate pressure sensor using whatever techniques we have uh, learned till now. So, we will look into that how to create a pressure sensor using a bulk micro machining technique ok. So, uh, we just go through this micro machining technique uh, lecture and I uh, will continue uh, showing one example of the 
bulk micro machining technique uh, followed by uh, uh, MEA which is micro electrode arrays that can be used to acquire signal from the brain and in this case we will take an example of the red's brain and followed by some more examples. So, till then you take care uh, if you have any questions feel free to ask us on the on the forum we will be very happy to answer your questions. Uh, I will see you next time.